So now, this is the hardest slide so far we've seen in this series of algorithm complexity. And we kind of get a little mathematical because we're doing this reason formally. Instead of the exact number of steps, remember it's a function of n, right? It's like, it's a function of the input size, I'm going to take this many steps. So it's a function of that. So as that number doubles, how does my number change? We don't care about an exact formula, we actually use abstraction. I care about a family of formulas. So we're going to categorize all the possible ways, all the possible runtimes into what we do in BJC, these six categories. And these six categories start with constant. If you look at the curve, as the input grows, I take no more time. So the input doubles, same number of time. Input triples, same number of time. Input grows by a factor of 100, same amount of time. Okay? Here's an example of that. Uh, I've got a list, and I want to, your, your, your function is supposed to return the first element of the list. Okay, ready? Here's the list. Look, here's a, like Santa is supposed to come up with the first guy on the list, okay? And the list could have 10 people. Santa goes, oh, first guy's right here. Boom, instantly. Now the list has a big scroll with all the kids ever Santa's giving to you. Ready? The problem is, Santa, give me the first guy on your list. Remember, the scroll's now a million people, a billion kids out in the world. Ready? Santa goes, oh, this first guy here. Done. Constant time. It, it ignores how long that scroll was. That's, it's not a function of how long the people were, how many people were on that list. It's just the first guy. The next one, linear, sorry, logarithmic, logarithmic. So it kind of grows as a log of the input. So it grows slower than linear. So what that means is we like that. We like constant. By the way, if we can ever get to constant, we are so happy because it means I don't care how big the input is, we're fast. We're big fast. Logarithmic is not as fast as constant, but faster than everybody else. And logarithmic says basically it's a kind of divide and conquer thing. Right? If I have a lot of people and I split them in half and then split those in half and split those in half, how many different rounds do I have? You have this in often in tournaments. You have 64 tournaments, 64 people in a tournament. How many days does it take to play that tournament, you'd say? Well, it's easy. If everybody plays the first round and then the winners play the next day, winners play the next day, you keep doing this, you think 64, that's probably seven rounds or so. Now, oh, what about 128? How many rounds is that for 128 teams? That's just eight. See how 128 grew by double, but I actually only grew by one? Oh no, 256 teams. We're going to invite every basketball team in the country to play this thing. 256, well, that's just nine. Okay. So you grow really slowly as the input's growing massively. Okay. Next is linear. Linear might be, hey Santa, count the, <laughs> the length of a list. So how many people are you going to be giving gifts to Santa? Well, he has to go through and for each one count one. So the idea is, you, you basically have a, a fixed cost for every person. So Santa has a list of a million. He has to go through and count a million numbers. His number will be erased. Oh, 99999, erase it, a million. There's the answer, a million people. So that's kind of a linear thing. Quadratic is growing like the square of it, which is a little bit more complicated. It's kind of like if you have to kind of draw a table, like where for every person here, you're comparing against every person here, that's kind of like filling in a table. It's like n times n, and you have to put a number in for each of these guys, right? What was the quality of handshake for every person who shook every other person's hand? So everybody in, every, all of n shook every other n person's hand. You write down the quality of the handshake for each one of those handshakes. That's kind of like a square of how many different handshakes you write down. That's an n squared or quadratic algorithm. Cubic is like, n times n times n. And that's a little bit more rare. It's harder to find those. But if I said, for every handshake, you then compare that with the person and ask them how good it was. So it's a, for every handshake, I then ask each person what they think of that handshake and whether that was a good handshake or not. So that's that kind of a cubic thing. Finally, the worst case of all is exponential. And exponential is really bad. So exponential says, if I'm at 2, let's think of 2 to the n. It's like a power. It's like an exp exponent. So let's say <clears throat> I double every time. So if I have two players, I'm going to have four. How many positions of light switches do we have? We, do, we saw that before, right? How many positions of light switches? With one light switch, it's only two. Well, that's easy. With two light switches, it's four possible positions. With three light switches, it's eight. With four, it's 16. See how I grow up really fast? And if I graph these guys in a log log plot, notice that everybody's kind of a straight line or less except for exponential, which as you get bigger and bigger and bigger is going to dominate how long it takes. This is a graph of efficiency and how long, how many steps it's going to take. Exponential dominates everybody. Okay? So for example, as I'm kind of thinking about this, because I'm thinking about it abstractly, if I have some, if I actually come up with an actual equation, 10n squared plus 4 log n plus n, 
How does that kind of grow? If you look, the dominating term is the largest term. So that's the largest term is the n squared term. And you remember, the squared is a quadratic. So it's going to grow as a quadratic. Okay? So more efficient algorithms could be more complex. And but they could, you know, meaning if you try to like take a, 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 an algorithm that's one of these higher ones, like quadratic or cubic, and you work hard to come find a better path to make it linear or sublinear, that's great because that allows you to work on much larger input. If the curve isn't growing as high, as steep, right? You want to bring this curve from being steep to be less steep. That's kind of making a more efficient algorithm. You make it less steep, and by, by the way, efficiency is not just number of computations, but also memory. You might end up using a lot of memory too. So you crank it down. Now that the curve is lower, I can make n bigger, and the number of steps isn't going to be crazy. Okay? All right. So we've just seen an example of how we measure our algorithms. We don't measure it be our a stopwatch running time, we measure it via the number of steps. We do that formally and mathematically by reasoning about it. And we have a couple of categories that we categorize things into. Exponential is the worst of them all, and that's the one that's not reasonable time. We call reasonable time all the ones that are lower than exponential. So it's reasonable. Cubic is reasonable. Quadratic is reasonable. They grow fast, but they don't grow crazy. Exponential grows so fast, I can't even do anything. By the time I'm up to, by the way, 10, 10 light switches, it's 1,000. 20 light switches, it's a million steps. 30 light switches, 30 light switches. Not a big deal. This room has 30 light switches. It's a billion. That's just too many steps. I can't do that. 40 light switches, a trillion. It's crazy. So the point of that is exponential is unreasonable. Everybody else is reasonable, all right? See you at the next video.